Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. This is our segment on God commands at a glance. And what we do here is go over the 1,050 commands in the New Testament for Christians to obey. All right. That's what this segment is all about. We go over the 1,050 commands in the New Testament. And we will be reading it in three different translations. We'll be reading out of the Dake Study Bible, D-A-K-E. And we will also be reading out of the NIV, known as the New International Version. And we will also be reading out of the Amplified, which is my favorite translation. After that, we're going to go into the Bible Believer's Commentary to get a little bit more insight. And if you do not have a copy of the 1050 Commands, a link will be in the description box below. Feel free to click that, download it, and print it out. And if you do not click that link, you can also find it online under any search engine. Just put in 1050 um, New Testament commands, and it will come up in two to three different PDF files, which you can download for free. Hallelujah. So without further ado, we're going to read our um, four to five different scriptures so we can know what God commands are this whole segment is stemmed behind John 14 and 15 so let's just go there really quickly so we can read why we need to know these commands amen so right here as you can see it says where's my pen at uh -oh. just use this one it says right here, a little crooked. It says, John 14, 15, if ye love me, keep my commandments. All right. If you love me, keep my commandments. This is in red. So this is Jesus speaking. But guess what, family? We have to know God commands in order to keep God commands. So this is what this whole segment is stemmed about because I want to be one of those people to show God that I love him so i want to be able to keep his commands but i must know them in order to keep them amen so if you want to do the same stay tuned we're going to pray our way in and then we're going to hit up our scriptures they are broken down by topics we have been going at this going on three years now 2023 will be our third year going into god commands and we're still not done so we are currently on week 93 all right and these are the scriptures here that we're going to be dealing with today and this is the topic is things to seek these are things that we should be seeking all right and these are going to be again commands so let's pray in so we can jump right on into our lesson heavenly father lord god i thank you father god for the opportunity to come before your people on today to go over your commands father god we thank you right now lord god for forgiving us for all of our sins known and unknown we thank you right now heavenly father for opening up our spiritual ears so that we may hear opening up our spiritual eyes so that we can see opening up our hearts to receive this word on today lord god and we ask that you purge anything that is not like you out of our hearts lord god so that we can receive this word and write it on the tablets of our hearts we thank you right now lord god for your divine wisdom your divine knowledge your divine clarity understanding revelation and discernment as i decrease heavenly father may you increase holy spirit have your way and teach us today in the mighty and matchless name of yeshua hamashiach in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen i hope you are ready i hope you're ready first of all let me apologize for the late post okay um it wasn't my fault, but it kind of was. I had broke a fingernail, and there was no way I was going to come on here with a broke nail. So I had to go to the nail shop, get my nails done, so that I can come on here correct. So that's why this video is posted late. So my apologies. Without further ado, let's get into it. Amen? Amen. All right, so here we are. Today we are going to be talking about things to seek. Things to seek. 
So if you do not have a Bible, first of all, grab you one, okay? That is very much a pet peeve of mine on this channel. Be prepared with a Bible or two, okay? We're going to be reading out of three translations over here, and I suggest that you have at least two to three translations of your own, all right? That's just the way um, the segment works. I will um, we'll turn to each one of these scriptures, and what you should do is pause the video once we go to the first scripture, read it, okay? Read it one, two, three, even maybe four times in each translation that you choose. All right, and then unpause it and then we'll read it in my three translations because when in all our getting, we want to get understanding, okay? And I do highly recommend that you read before the scripture and after the scripture to keep the scripture in context. However, we do not do that on this segment because this is God's commands at a glance. We're just glancing at them and that's why we use the commentary so we, that we can keep the um, scripture in context, all right? So I highly recommend you read before the scripture, after the scripture, more likely read the whole chapter. Hallelujah. And by all means, if you feel led to dig deeper, do that. If you come across words that you don't understand, pause the video, look them up, take your little notes. This is your own personal study. You don't have to rush. If I did five, you want to do 10, keep going. Okay. There's no right or wrong way to study the word of God. Just get it in your system, right? Feed your soul. That's what it's all about. All right. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So we are first going to be going to Matthew 6 and 33. Then we're going to head over to Luke 12 and 31. We're going to hit up Matthew 7 and 7, 1 Corinthians 14 and 12. And then we're going to go to Colossians 3 and 1 and we're going to be done. All right, family. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. I'm excited. Again, I apologize for the late, late, late post, but it's better late then never amen so let's head on over to matthew 6 and 33 all right so this would be your time to pause the video and go to it in your bible and read it over and get what the holy spirit is giving to you and then come on back and let's read it in my three translations let's head on over to matthew 6 and 33 all right we're going to read it out of the kjv so let's go to matthew 36 and 33 Matthew 6 and 33. Give me a second, family. You know I do this in real time. Uh, where is it? Matthew 6 and 33. Let me find it. Okay, John, Mark. So it got to be up here somewhere. Acts. These things are kind of rubbed off. Okay, here's Matthew. So let's go to 6 and 33, family. All right, here we go. Woo! All right. Okay, here we are. We are in the book of Matthew right up here. I see that. Here's chapter 6, and we're going to go to 33. 33. I hope you guys are having a great and beautiful Tuesday so far. And yes, I post these every Tuesday, family. So again, I apologize for the late post. But here we go. All right. Matthew 33. Let's read. Jesus speaking is all in red. And it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, comma, and his what righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you glory be to god come on come on love this but seek ye first this is a command the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you what things are we talking about here the things that you're chasing in the world right the things that we chase after the world, marriage, houses, kids, family, jobs, money, all those things will be added to you, family. You don't have to chase those things if you do this one command. Seek first the kingdom. It's right here. Protocol, principle, command. But ye first. F but seek ye first. My bad. The kingdom 
What is that? God's way of doing things. The spiritual realm. Seek first the kingdom of God, which is the spiritual realm. Okay? And his righteousness. What is righteousness? The things, the way God wants it done. The way God wants it done. Righteousness is doing it God's way. And then what? If you seek the kingdom first, seek the things spiritually and seek them righteous, doing it his way. And what? By default, all these things that you're seeking after shall be added unto you. So let's go ahead and read that in the NIV. I'm getting excited already because that's a principle. That's a principle. So let's go ahead and read it in the NIV. And I highly recommend that you highlight and underline. As you can see, my Bible here is, is boxed off, is highlighted, and the word command is written because I know when I open my Bible, these are commands that I should be knowing and um, abiding by, right? Applying to my life. So let's go. Matthew 6 and 33, family. Matthew 6 and 33. It's already highlighted in blue. And this is my, let me just pull it up because there's a lot of new people here. The Bible that I'm using for the NIV is my Charles Stanley Life Principle Bible, one of my top five. Okay, it is in the NIV. So here we go. Let me bring you back down. Matthew 6 and 33. All right, and this is just what I do. <sighs> okay, so let's read it. NIV, it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well and iv is already highlighted in the blue it comes like that so what i'm gonna do is just box it off because this is just what i do family and when i say family i'm talking to my subscribers if you're not subscribed i'm not talking to you okay you're not part of the family unless you subscribe Okay, every time I say family, I'm talking about my FFT subscribers. All right, so that's just, let me just clear that up. Let's read it again. But seek first his kingdom. Who is his? God, Yahweh. First seek his kingdom and what his righteousness, right way of doing things, and all things will be given to you as well. Whew, that's good. Okay, let me see. Is there a note? And there is no note. So let's go ahead and read it in the Amplified. Okay, let me just write the word command really quickly. Because that's what I do. So when I come and see this, I know that it is a command. Command. You can mark your Bible however you like. You can put a little dot there. You can put a C for command. You can do exactly what I'm doing. It's your preference. It's your Bible. Just mark it. Okay? So let's go ahead and go into the Amplified. Pull my girl over here. It's my baby. All right. We are in chapter 6. And we need to go to 33. Okay, and I show this because this is just how I, I have to make sure you see the book. I mean the chapter and then the verse right here is 33. This is where we're going right here. So let's read it. And this is in the Amplified. It says, but first and most importantly, seek, which means what? Aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness his way of doing and being right, the attitude and the character of God, come on Amplified, and all these things will be given to you also. I love to Amplify. This is the only translation at this time in my life that really speaks to me. Everybody has their preference. Okay, I have nothing against the KJV. I have nothing against any other translation. This is just the one that speaks to me. And I'm going to read the Bible that speaks to me. Okay. So let me write the word command right here. Command. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's read it one more time. 
but first command family this is a command but first okay that's the key word here this is what we should be doing first but first and most importantly seek which means what aim at strive after what seeking right his i like how they capitalized his kingdom and capitalized his righteousness his way of doing and being right who yahweh god the attitude and character of god and all these things will be given to you also that is a beautiful promise and this is a command family this is what we should be doing first this is what we should be doing first is there a com is there a note <sighs> nope there's no note so let's go ahead and read the commentary for this and if you do not have you some commentary it would be who of you to invest in some okay invest in you some commentary the commentary that we're going to use today um, and throughout this whole series is the Believer's Bible Commentary. It is a one volume. Um, so basically, the whole Bible is in this one big old thick book. It's all broken down. It's basically man interpretation of the scripture. Do not get this and replace your Bible. No, these are man's words. This is not scripture, but it just helps enlighten you on the understanding of what we're reading. Okay, so that's what commentary is. All right, so here we go. We're going to go to Matthew 6 and 33. Here we are in the book of Matthew chapter 6. And here is 33 right here. So let's go ahead and read. And it says, The Lord, therefore, makes a covenant with his followers. He says, in effect, quote, If you will put God's interest first in your life, I will guarantee your future needs. Woo! If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then I will see that you never lack the necessities of life. Woo! Come on, commentary. This is beautiful. Come on. I don't know. I get excited. I get a little passionate. Don't bind me. I just love the word of God. And we're going to read this again. We're going to read it again. Slowly. I'm going to stop at every single comma. Okay? Because I am just want this to just get in my soul. Okay? Get in my spirit. Again, it says, The Lord, comma, therefore, comma, <laughs> makes a covenant with his followers. Amen. He says, in effect, quote, if you will put God's interest first in your life, do what? Put God's interest first in your life. I will guarantee your future needs. Come on. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then I will see that you never lack the necessities of life. That's so fair. That's fair. That's not just a command. That's a promise. Come on. That's a promise. But are we doing that? If all your needs are not being met or you're lacking in some area, that's a telltale sign that you are what? Not putting God interest first. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. If you are lacking in any area of your life, you might want to um, think about, are, am I putting God's interest first or am I putting my interest first? Or am I putting my job first or am I putting my children first? Am I putting my husband or my wife first? And then God second, third, fourth, fourth, fifth. Okay. That's how I'm looking at that. Am I lacking anywhere in my area? Finances? Where? Am, what's going on? Okay, I'm not putting God first. God is third on the list. No, God needs to be first. 
his interests, his way of doing things. That's the only way the promises go be manifested in your life is to put it first. And then all those things to be added, family. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Got it? Good. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Ooh, this is going to be a good one. I can already tell. I can already tell, family. So let's get on over here to our next scripture, which is what? Let's see what it is. Okay. Ooh, I'm already fired up. If y'all don't know what fired up means, that means excited. On fire for the Lord. Okay, that's what fired up means. I'm excited. So let's mark that off. So let's go on over to Luke 12 and 31. Luke 12 and 31. Pause the video. Go turn to it in your Bible. Read it two or three times. And then unpause and read along with me. All right. So head on over to Luke 12 and 31. Let's go. All right. So here we are. Luke. Let's go to chapter 12. Ooh, thank you, Lord. 11. Okay. 11. Okay, here we are. Chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 and 31. All right. We are in the book of Luke. Here is chapter 12. So we need to go to 31, family. And it is right up here. See, can I get it? I got it. Good. All right. So let's read it again. This is New Testament. All read. Jesus is speaking. Let's see what he has to say. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. This is twice the same thing. The same thing, family. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just this just this look. This just caught my attention. I just happened to look down. Look at this. Demons are familiar spirits. I don't know. That just stood out to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, the, the little sidebar. So let's go ahead to the NIV. Let's go to the NIV. <clears throat> and we're going to go to Luke. That's what we're going to do. Going to go to Luke. And we're going to go to chapter 12. All right. Here we are. We're in Luke chapter 12 and we need to go to 33 with that don't worry all right here we go luke 12 31 not 33 luke 12 31 right here can y'all see I need to make sure you guys can see. All right, here we go. Luke 12, 31 reads, but seek his, I don't know why it's not capitalized, but it should be. It says, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. But seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. I'm just going to box this off really quick. I love this. I love this. I love this. Okay. Now I can highlight. 
this is just what I do you feel free to mark your Bible any way you feel all right bam and I'm gonna write the word command right here command because that's what it is boom there it is family is there a note let's see 1231 and there is no notes so let's go to the amplified let's go to my girl okay let's go to Luke 12 Go Luke 12 and 31. Whew. All right, here we go. We're in the book of Luke, chapter 12, 31 is right here. Let's read. It says, But strive for and actively seek his kingdom. I like how they capitalize that. I, pay, I try to pay attention to every single word. But strive for and actively seek his kingdom. And these things will be given to you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and box this off. This is just what I do, family. You don't have to do it like this. Okay, this is not for aesthetics. It's not to be, it don't got to be pretty, but if you want yours to be pretty, okay, I'm just getting the job done. And I'm going to write the word command right here in this little box. C-O-M-M-A-N-D, command because that's what it is and there's no note so let's go to our commentary all right got the commentary out and we need to go to Luke here it is Luke Luke what 12 12 and 31 okay so it's 29 so we are in the book of Luke 12 and then come on down here 29 and 31 is all mixed in together so let's go ahead and read it all right let's read <clears throat> it says actually our daily needs are small it is wonderful how simply we can live why then give food and clothing such a prominent place in our lives and why have an anxious mind worrying about the future this is the way unsaved people live Woo! wait a minute let me just put a pen in it right there this ain't even our scripture but it spoke to me right there that spoke to me it says and why have an anxious mind okay worrying about the future God is in control why are we worrying about the future well you should be worried technically if you're not doing it his way because that's gonna lead to death and destruction so if you're doing it God way there's no need to be anxious and there's no need to worry because it's already written according to his plan for your life right so again, it says, and have an anxious mind worrying about the future. Why? This is the way unsaved people live. How do unsaved people live? They're anxious and they're worried because they're not on the true path. They're not living out the path that God has planned for them. So they should be worried and anxious. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's how unsaved people live. 
in worry and anxiousness because they're not doing it God's way. They're doing it their way. So they should be anxious and worried. My God, come on. Let's keep going. It says, this is the way unsafe people live. The nations of the world who do not know God as their father consecrate, I mean, concentrate on food, clothing, and pleasure. Mm. These things form the very center and circumference of their existence. Wow. But God never intended that his children should spend their time in the mad rush for creature comforts. Mmm. Mmm. I'm just, I'm just chewing on this real quick. Let me just go back. Let's go back. These things from the very center and circumference of their existence. <sighs> okay. So these things that it's talking about is what our food, our clothing, and our pleasure. The Bible said, if we just seek the kingdom, all those things, which is what our food, clothing, pleasure, anything, the desires of our heart, whatever those things are, will be added to us if we seek first the kingdom, right? So it says these things from the very center and circumference of their existence, that's all the people that is unsaved think about. Their whole world is consumed by it. It says, but God, come on family, never intended that his children, who children? His children should spend their time in the mad rush of creature comforts. Woo, that's good. It says he, let's get on up here. He what? It says he has a work to be done on earth and he has promised to care for those who give themselves wholeheartedly to him. Let's put a pen in it. Come on. Okay, I'm just trying to let that sink in because this is good. This is good. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. It says, if we seek his kingdom, he will never let us strive I mean, he will, never, he will never let us starve or be naked. How sad it would be to come to the end of life and realize that most of our time was spent enslaving for what was already included in the ticket home to heaven. Oh my goodness. Let me go. We're going to read that again for the people in the back. And I'm and, and for the and let me just say this because I got a comment asking what does in the people in the back mean? Let me just clarify. The people in the back is me, okay? For the slowies, for the people who lack understanding, for people who need to hear it two, three, four times before it clicks in their mind and gets in their heart. That's for the people in the back. That's who I'm talking to. More so to me, okay? I'm a slowy. I have to read things three and four times to get an understanding because God said, in all you're getting, get an understanding. So I am what? A person in the back, okay? So we're going to read it again for the people in the back that need to hear this another time so that it clicks, so that they get understanding, all right? So let's go ahead and read that again. I'm going to start all the way back down here. Because it, it, I, I just got to. Because I need to get the whole, the whole thing, right? It says, but God never intended that his children should spend their time in the mad rush for creature's comfort. Whew. It says what he, who is he? God. God basically has a work to be done on earth and we all have an assignment. I hope you know what yours is. Okay. And it says, and he has promised who God to care for those who give themselves wholeheartedly to him. Who is him? God. God has made a promise 
to care for us, family. God has made a promise to care for those who give themselves wholeheartedly. Key word here. Not some of your heart, not part of your heart, but your whole heart. Right? To him. Whew. It says, if we seek his kingdom, okay, meaning spiritual things, seek his kingdom, he will never let us starve or be naked. How sad it would be to come to the end of life. You're on your deathbed, okay? And you finally realize that most of our time was spent enslaving for what was already included in the ticket home to heaven. Listen, that's deep. Because we are so caught up in the way of this world, doing it the world's way, which is Satan's way. He says, separate yourself from the world. Don't be conformed to the world, but do things my way, right? I need you guys to look on the things above because these things on this earth is temporal. But what I'm showing you is spiritual. It's going to last forever. So focus up here, family. Focus on the spiritual things. Focus on the kingdom, right? Because everything in this world is going to pass away. Come on, let's get this. So he said, you going you going you spent your whole life chasing after your career, chasing after your education, a husband, a wife, all these material things. But all you had to do was just seek the kingdom and God was going to give you all that by default. And then you finally come at the end of your life, you realize that most of your whole life was spent what slaving after those things of this world for what was already included in the ticket home to heaven. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Ooh, that's deep. Okay, let's let's let that med meditate in. Let's let that marinate. That was good. That's so good. You know, commentary is always so helpful. So let's get back to this. We spent a little time there, but I, we needed to. At least I needed to. And all our getting, we want to get understanding. Seek first the kingdom. Command, family. Command. All right, let's go down here and mark it off where we at. So we just came from Luke 12 and 31. Done. So let's run on over to Matthew 7 and 7. Okay, family? Let's go to Matthew 7 and 7. And again, these are things to seek. This is our topic, things to seek. Again, commands. God in prayer is something that we should seek. So let's go to Matthew 7 and 7 and read about it. Let's go read about it. Matthew 7 and 7. Oh, this page. Uh-oh. Come on, baby. Oof. All right. Okay, what is this? Matthew, what? Five? Matthew six? Matthew seven, right here. And verse seven, right here. So we're in the book of Matthew, okay? Chapter seven, uh-huh. Verse seven, right here. Let's read. It says, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Woo! I was about to box it off. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. And I always say this, y'all always, you have not because you ask not. Does God know your heart? Yes. But he said, ask. In other words, petition him, right? In prayer for things that you desire. And make sure that it lines up with what he said you can have. It's that simple. We make it difficult. It's not that difficult. He says right here, ask and it shall be given to you. 
Guess what? Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Are you knocking? Are you seeking? And are you asking? Probably not. That's why you don't got it. Or if you are, you're doing it with ill will. Your motives are corrupt. So you're not going to get it because it's not lining up with God's word. Simple. Simple, family. Simple. So let's go ahead and read that in the NIV. Ooh, come on. Already, we should, this, are, this should already be marked off in our Bible. It should already be marked off because I remember um, reading this already. So let's go to Matthew. Here we go. Matthew 7 and 7. That's where we're going. Okay, here's Matthew 7. And it is. I knew it because we already been through over this. We already been over this. If y'all been following, y'all already know we went over this command. And my and my is titled Act, Seek and Knock. It's already commanded up, but we're gonna read it again anyway. Acts, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you command family already commanded up already highlighted already boxed off and here is a note we're going to read it again let's read it right here let's read let's read it says god has a wonderful plan for your life but you must humble yourself before him and ask him to reveal this to you when you knock on the door of his heart through prayer and thanksgiving, he opens himself up to you. Mm. The greatest blessing we can receive are not material in nature. Come on. They are the blessings of his infinite love and care for us. He delights in showering us with good things. He does what? He delights in it, family. He doesn't want to keep anything from us, right? He doesn't want to keep anything from us. He delights in giving us what we desire. Mm. Okay. It says, but we must what? Present our request to him. It's a command. It's not going to fall out the sky because he knows your heart. He said the command is to ask seek and knock ask seek and knock put that in the comments below that's our comment of the day ask seek and knock ask seek and knock and i'm gonna read this one more time for the people in the back let's go let's read it slowly let's listen to what this is saying god has a wonderful plan for your life for your life and for my life he has a plan already okay it says but you must humble yourself there's a nugget we must what humble ourselves before him who is him god jesus so we must be humble before him and ask him to reveal this to us right we must be humble and we must ask him to reveal this to us when you knock on the door of his heart, whose heart? God's heart, through prayer, which I said is a petition. When you ask God for something, that's called petition. A prayer of petition means you're asking. And thanksgiving, don't forget that part. You need to be thankful, grateful for what you already have and what he's already done. Come on. Right? So we need to be humble. We need to ask through prayer and we need to be thankful. And then what? He opens himself up to you. It sounds like a protocol to me. There's a protocol here. You got to ask. You got to be humble. And you got to have thanksgiving. Those three components must be all wrapped in one to get this thing to work. You can't just be 
asking and not thankful. You can't just be thankful and don't ask. You can't not be humble either. They're all three components is what activates this. Let's be clear. You got to have all three components. You have to have your humbleness. All right. You need to ask, mean open your mouth. Okay. And then you need to be um, thankful. All right. Then it says, then what? He opens himself up to you. The greatest blessing we can receive are not material in nature. It's not the houses, the cars, the money, the bank accounts, the business. That's not the biggest thing. That's not the greatest blessing. They are blessings of his infinite love. That's the true gift. That's the true blessing, right? Is his love for us and his care for us. Woo, hallelujah. It says, he delights in showering us with good things, but we must present our request to him. We must what? Present, mean ask, petition, put before him our requests to him. My God. <laughs> Command, ask, knock, and seek. That's good. I just need to chew on that for a minute. Okay. I just needed to chew on that for a minute. So let's go ahead and read it in our Amplified. Fire. Shut up in my bones. Woo. Come on, family. I love y'all so, 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 so much. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 7 and 7. Let's read it in my girl. It should already be highlighted. Okay, here we go. We in the book of Matthew. Here's chapter 7. And then verse 7 is right here. It's highlighted, but it ain't commanded. What was I moving too fast? Let's read it. Ask and keep on asking. And it will, not might, it will be given to you. This is the word of God. He's not a liar. So you must not be asking or you asking with wrong motives. Okay? Ask. This is what I'm reading. And keep on asking. And it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking. And you will find. Knock and keep on knocking. And the door will be open unto you. Prayer and the golden rule. Listen, listen, listen. Command. How about that? Mm, mm, mm. Let me just do this here. Command. Boom, there it is. Is there a note here? Nope, there's no note. Nope, that's good, that's good. Let's read it one more time. Just, just because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and what? Keep on seeking and you will find, knock, and what? Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. So let's go to the commentary. That's crystal clear. Let's go to our commentary. We're almost done. We only got two more to go, family. We doing good on time? I think so. So let, where are we going? Matthew. Seven and seven. Here we go. Woo, I love the word of God. I love it. I love it. Okay. Seven and seven. So this is seven and eight. Keep on seeking and knocking. Woo. 
this is like a this is like a refresher for the ones that's been with me for a while this is a refresher for us we know this as a command right let's read it it says if we think that we can live out the teachings of the sermon on the mount by our own strength we have failed to realize the supernatural character of the life to which the savior calls us the wisdom or power for such a life must be given to us from above put a pen in it let's read that again i'm just gonna read it again because i need to read it again for me who the person in the back okay let's read it again if we think that we can live out this teaching of the Sermon on the Mount by our own strength, we have failed to realize the what supernatural character of the life to which the Savior calls us. Because the key word here is supernatural family. Supernatural. Okay? We can't do this in our own strength my lord my god thank you father it says the wisdom or power let's say that again the wisdom or power for such a life must be given the wisdom or the power for such a life must be given to us from where above whoo so here we have an invitation to ask and keep on asking, to seek and to keep on seeking, to knock and keep on knocking. Wisdom and power for the Christian life will be given to all who earnestly and persistently pray for it. I'm just going to be quiet right there listen to this read this let's read it again <sighs> this is so good to me listen it says so here we have an invitation we've been invited okay to ask and to keep on asking we have an invitation to seek and keep on seeking we have an invitation to knock and keep on knocking okay got it good wisdom and power who wisdom and power for the christian life will be given to all who earnestly and persistently pray for it Woo! wisdom and power Wisdom and power will be given to us, family, if we would earnestly and persistently pray for it. That's good. So we should not be lacking in any wisdom and we should not be lacking in any power because we're praying for it consistently. Every prayer that I open up in, I ask God. He said, ask and it shall be given, seek and we shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. So every prayer, I'm coming to him, petitioning him, asking him for his wisdom, for his knowledge, for his clarity, for his understanding, for his revelation, and for his discernment. Every prayer, I ask. I ask. Because it's a command. It's commanded. Okay, I just want to make sure y'all getting it. It says, taken out of context, verse 7 and 8 might seem like a blank check for believers. For example, we can get anything we ask for. No, you can't. If it's not lining up with, with the word, you're, it's not coming to you. So let's not get that twisted, but let's keep going. But this is simply not true. Boom, whoop, there it is. The verses must be understood in their immediate context. And in light of the whole Bible's teaching on prayer, therefore, what seems like un unqualified promises here are actually restricted 
by other passages. Yes, so true. For example, from Psalm 66, 18, we learn that the person praying must have no unconfessed sin in his life. That's number one. You can't be in sin trying to ask God for something because he already not going to hear you. If you read your Bible, he's telling you, if you have any ought against anyone, go handle that before you come ask me for anything. Get that unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, envy, jealousy out of your heart and then come talk to me because I'm not hearing you. Period, family. Period. Period. We must not have any confessed sin in our life. The Christian must pray in faith. And what is faith? We know faith is what? Standing on or believing in God's word. Right? That's what faith is in a nutshell. Believing what the Bible is saying. And you got to bring God faith. You got to have faith. God, bring God what? Faith, which is what? His word. So God wants you to bring him his word. What did he say? Not what did you say? Bring God back his word, which is his faith. The substance of things hoped for. Right? Come on. It says... The Christian must pray in faith, what, bringing God back his word, and in conformity with the will of God, because God's word is his will. Prayer must be offered persistently and sincerely. Mm, mm, mm. And if you was following in the purpose of prayer, you learned this in that series and that whole, what was it? Eight or 12 week Bible study we did understanding the purpose and power of prayer. If you followed along in that, you already know this. Those were some key components on why prayers are not being answered. And if you haven't studied that chapter, go get the book and go get on that lesson. It's going to change your life. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. You're going to learn something that the church ain't teaching you. Okay, let me just say that right there. Prayer must be offered persistently. God didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray. It's a commandment to pray. That's your, that's your main line of communication to the Father that you have been reconciled to. That's a key component in this walk. You talk to God, God talks back to you. Through what? Prayer. Woo! Prayer must be offered persistently. You don't give up on it. You keep praying. Praying. Keep, he said, what was it saying? Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Be persistent with it. Chase after it. Seek after it. And it must be sincere. Not just something to do, not something to say because it sounds good, coming from your heart. My Lord, my God. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good, family. I'm enjoying this. That was a hand praise. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I missed y'all. Woo, I missed y'all. I missed y'all. I missed y'all. Okay, here we go. Come on, family. Let's get to let's get let's get it. Let's get it. I love the word of God. Come on. Let's see what we let's see where we're going next. Let's see where we're going next. Where we at? Where we at? Okay, so we just came from Matthew 7 and 7. This pen better work. Okay. So let's move on over to 1 Corinthians 14 and 12. Pause the video, go there, read it first for yourself, any study notes you may have, and then unpause it and let's read it in my three, okay? So let's head on over to 1 Corinthians 14 to 12 so we can see what to edify the church, things to seek. Let's go, 1 Corinthians 14 and 12. All right, let's see, can I see? Barely, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians right here. 1 Corinthians 14. Let's get it.
this video is so late, but it's, it's up, okay? It's up, family, it's up. My apologies. I got a lot going on. Y'all just don't have a clue. I'll share with y'all later, though. I'll share with you later, okay? 14 and 12, okay? Oops, oops, oops. Come on now. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we want to get to number 12, which is right over here. Let's read. Let's read. Here we go. It says, Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Let's read that again. Even, ye, even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Hallelujah. Command. Command. All right, let's go to the NIV. We're going to learn today. That's what we're going to do. We're going to learn today. What are we learning today? How to seek out this word and write it on the tablets of our hearts so that we can show God that we love him and not just talk about it, but be about it, live it out, walk it out because it's a lifestyle. First Corinthians, y'all, let me see, here we go. First Corinthians 14, let's go. All right, here we is. Here we is. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. First Corinthians, verse 12 is right over here. All right. First Corinthians. We in 14. And then here's 12 right here. Let's read. It says, so it is with you since you are eager to. That's another word for zealous. For gifts of the spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. <clears throat> Let's read it again. So it is with you. Since you are eager for gifts of the spirit, try to excel in and those that build up the church. What are you why, what are you trying to be eager about? What are you trying it's telling us to excel in what? The gifts of the spirit. What are the what are the gifts of the spirit? It's in Galatians. The gifts of the spirit, what? Patience, kindness, self-control. Y'all know the gifts of the nine gifts of the spirit. Go look them up. If you don't, go look them up. So it is with you since you are eager for gifts of the spirit try to excel in those that build up the church so it's this is a command now that we should what excel in those that build up the church all right this is good we've read this before this is not a new scripture to us but when you just read it, it just hit different for some reason, at least for me. And there is a note. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more understanding over here in 412, 1 Corinthians. Let's read this note. Let's read it. It says, God wants us to grow in grace, learn about him, and serve others together. Why together? Because our unity of heart and action best shows the power of God's love. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's read it again. Since you are eager for gifts of the spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. God wants us to grow in grace. What is grace? Undeserved favor. That's what grace is. He wants us to grow in that. Learn about him, uh-huh, and serve others together, uh-huh. Why together, you ask? 
because our unity, togetherness, what of heart and action, okay, key word here, because our unity, which is our togetherness of our what heart, and not just our heart, but our actions, our heart and action, our heart and action best shows the power of God's love being unified in one body. Come on, somebody, because our unity of heart and action best shows the power of God's love. I hope you get it. God wants us to grow in grace, learn about him and serve others together. Why together? Because our unity of heart and action best shows the power of God's love. Amen, amen, amen. That's good. Come on. Come on. Let's go to the Amplified. Who are we going to learn today? First Corinthians. Let me find it in these tabs, y'all, because... Oof. I can't see. Okay. First Corinthians 14. Let's keep going. Let's turn. Okay. 14. First Corinthians 14, verse 12. All right, 1 Corinthians verse 14, verse 12 is right here. So let's read it. Let's read it. It says, so it is with you since you are so very eager to have spiritual gifts and manifestations of the spirit, strive to excel in ways that will build up the church spiritually. Woo, I love the way the Amplified put it. I love the way the Amplified put it. Let's read it one more time, family. You know, faith comes by here and I got to just keep reading it because I'm that person in the back that need to get understanding. So it is with you. Since you are so very eager to have spiritual gifts, Rokisha, and manifestations of the spirit, Strive to excel in ways that will build up the church spiritually. Command. What should I be doing? I should strive to excel in ways that will build up the church. What way? Spiritually. Okay. Not just me, for y'all too. I just try to make the word personal. This word is speaking directly to me. It's speaking directly to me. Okay. This is a word. This is a word right here. He has spoken. Let's read it. Let's understand it. And let's apply it. Put it into practice. This is a command. That's what it is. Let's read it one more time. Ooh, ooh. So it is with you, since you are so very eager to have spiritual gifts and manifestations of the spirit. This is the command right here. Strive. Go after. Right? Excel. Strive to excel in ways that will what? Build up the church spiritually. Hallelujah. Command, family. Command. My God, my God, my God. I love it. I love it. All right, let's go to our commentary. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. First Corinthians right here. Boom. There it is. 14. Let's go. 14, 
and 12. Let's see, 10, 12, right here. All right, so we are in 1 Corinthians 14, and verse 12 is right here. Let's read it. Let's read. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. Okay, it says, in, in view of this, the Corinthians should mingle their zeal for spiritual gifts with the desire to edify the church. Make the edification of the church your aim in this desire to excel. Moffat translates it, notice that Paul never discourages them in their zeal for spiritual gifts but he seeks to guide and instruct them so that in the use of these gifts, they will reach the highest goal. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's read it again. In view of this, the Corinthians should mingle their zeal or their eagerness, right? For spiritual gifts with the desire to edify the church. Make the edification of the church your aim, right? That should be our focus. In this desire to excel, so you wanna excel, not just be good at it, you should be excelling at what edification of the church. Moffat translates it, notice that Paul never discourages them in their zeal for spiritual gifts. And spiritual just mean invisible family. It's something that's supernatural. It's spiritual. You can't see it. But seeks to guide and instruct. Paul seeks to guide and instruct them so that, so that in the use of these gifts, which are spiritual, they will reach the highest goal. Hallelujah. Good, good, good. <sighs> okay, that's good, family. That's good. Okay, let's let's move on. I I like it. I like. I like it. I like it. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's get back over here. We only got two more to go. Let's see what we're working with. Let's pull this on down. Let's see where we at. Okay, so uh, get my pen here. So we just came from here. Oh, we got one more. This is the last one. And what are we doing? We're doing good on time. We're doing real good. Okay, so let's go to our last scripture of the day, family, or the night, I should say. Colossians 3 and 1. Colossians 3 and 1. Again, we're talking about things to seek things above Woo! this is it this is it colossians 3 and 1 let's go colossians 3 and 1 i talked about this already i talked about this already i read my word Woo! come on colossians 3 and 1 where's 3 at i see okay it's right here so we in the book of Colossians, here's chapter three, right here, chapter three and one. Let's read it. Oh, what's up here? Let's read. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. This is a command also. And I talked about this already. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ, mm -hmm, where at the right hand of the father, right? That's where we have been risen. It says, seek those things which are above. I said that, remember? Which Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Crystal clear. Not seeking the things of this world below. Houses, cars, all that material thing. No. He didn't say seek those things. He said, first seek the kingdom, which is what? Above, which is what? Spiritual. And all these things that you chasing of the world will be added to you. 
We got it backwards. Let's read it again. It's clear. If ye then be risen with Christ, do what? Command. Seek those things which are above. What are those things above? Your inheritance? Going to heaven? Seeking your spiritual inheritance? Seeking your eternal life? That's what it's talking about. That should be the only thing on your mind. Okay? Making sure that you are secure and got your position in place. Doing what God told you to do to secure your spot. Doing things righteously. Now learning who God is in his ways and living out the life that he wants you to live according to the foundations of the earth that he already planned it. That's what we should be seeking. My Lord, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If ye then be risen with Christ, come on, seek those things which are above, which are spiritual, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And I say this a lot too. This right here, when I'm talking about this, is the spiritual aspect. The whole Bible is spiritual, right? But until you understand that and start reading it, reading it as a spiritual type of... Um, understanding having a spiritual understanding you're reading the bible so carnally it's, it won't make sense it's going to be like charlie brown will want will want 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 because we're looking at it from a carnal sense we're not looking at it in a spiritual sense that's why i always ask for our spiritual eyes to be open and our spiritual ears to be open right because the lord said if you have ears to hear right spiritually then, then this whole Bible and the way that this world is working will make sense. It wasn't until I made that spiritual connection that my whole life, the world, God, the Bible started to make sense. It didn't ever make sense to me because I was so carnal. I wasn't looking above. I was so caught up in the world. It didn't make sense. I was blinded. I was deceived. I was lost. Because I wasn't looking at spiritual things. Because I couldn't see. Why? Because I wasn't seeking it either. Now that I'm seeking it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Life makes so much sense. I was not connected to the spiritual side of things. And it wasn't until I got connected to the spiritual side. That everything just clicked it just clicked and everything just started to make so much sense. I was missing the spiritual aspect. 20 years in church. Never been having a spiritual connection. Sad but true. So sad. I was lost in the sauce. Do you understand me? Until just 2020. I became spiritually awakened to the spiritual aspect of the Bible. I'm not ashamed. I should be, but I'm not. Because I got it now. I, I finally got it. And that's why I came. I got to stay on here. So other people get it. Because I've been in church. 20 plus years. And never had a spiritual connection. Didn't even know God. I knew of God. But I didn't know him. I never had a personal relationship with him. No I didn't. But I do now. And it's the best thing you could ever want or ask for. Period. Woo. Mm -mm. Let's keep going. Where are we going? <laughs> Colossians. That I'm telling you, it, it it was I was lacking spiritual knowledge, y'all. I didn't have no none. I had no spiritual connection at all. Everything was Scooby Doo. Didn't understand nothing. Charlie Brown, well, won't, 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 read the word, didn't make sense, never, nothing was clicking, frustrated, didn't want to read, hated reading. Now I can't get enough because I've been, I've, I was seeking, I started seeking after God with my whole heart. And he said, I'll meet you right where you are. You seek after me, 
abiding me, I will abide in you. Come nigh to me, I'll come nigh to you. So when I start really seeking God with my whole heart, asking him for understanding, everything just, he opened up my eyes. He opened up my eyes. And now I see why you can't help but tell the good news. Once you learn something and have an understanding of something, you want everybody to know. You want everybody to tap in. You want everybody to get engaged to the power of God and have him and, and see him, see his work manifested in your life. Whew, it's the, it's the best thing ever. I know people say that. I know that sounds cliche, but it's the truth. You get, you become a whole, you become one with the creator, right? You become alive. That's what happens. You got connected to the life source and you be, you got, you just come alive because the, the living, this is the living word. This is the living word. This is, I'm telling you, this is the living word. And I was so disconnected going to church every day on every committee you can think of, but I didn't know God. My Lord, so sad. And I know I wasn't, I know I'm not the only, some people out there that have been in church 50 years and still don't know the Lord. You can't tell me that they do. Because I'm looking at their fruit and I'm looking at their life. But anyway, all I can do is just get on here and try to help you get spiritually awakened to the, to the Lord. To know him personally. Where am I going? Colossians 3. Come on, let me focus. Because I'll be on a whole tangent on a, with a whole story time. <laughs> okay. Say what this is about. 3 and 1. Here we go. I'm telling you, 2020. That is, it, and, it, and I'm going to say this. It might sound a little cliche, cliche, but 2020, that's when my vision and my spiritual eyes was open. So I got 2020 vision, okay, in the year 2020. My eyes was open, you hear me? So that's very significant for me. That 2020, I got my 2020 vision in the spirit. My Lord. I'm a, so I'm still, I thought I was doing something. I'm, I'm a babe in Christ. I'm just now on puree, okay? I'm trying to chew on this meat. I'm asking the Lord every day, help me get off of this milk. That I've been on for 25 plus years. That's a shame. Should not be on milk still. You should already know Jesus loves you. Nobody shouldn't have to keep telling you that. That's milk. <laughs> okay. No. We should be focusing on the spiritual things above. Trying to get on our assignment. Seeking the Lord after our assignment. What did he, what did he bring you here for? What is your assignment? Besides telling the word. Telling the good news. Building up your brethren. My God, it's so much. There's so much to do in the body of Christ, y'all. It's so much to do. But we so distracted. We're so distracted. Okay, let me let me focus. I'm see, I'm I'm being a distraction right now. Let's 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 focus on this word. Three and one. Here we go. Colossians. Three and one. And we through. We through. We are through. Let's read it command listen living as those made alive in Christ you better ask somebody it says since comma then comma <laughs> you have been raised with Christ as soon as you made that commitment as soon as you believe that he died on the cross for your sin and he rose on the third day and you believe that you was risen with them at the right hand of God. That's power. You have been given authority. I'm just saying, I didn't, I didn't get it. I, it didn't, it didn't click. I felt weak. I felt, um, just like I didn't deserve none of it, which we don't. None of us deserve it. That's where the grace come in. Undeserved favor. This power is a gift that was given to us. Mm, let me stop. Come on, let's go. Read the word, Rokisha. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above 
where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. But if don't nobody ever tell you this, you can read it all day long, but if it don't get explained so you can learn how to apply it, it's all for nothing. It's all for nothing. And this is where I feel like the churches has failed us. I'm sorry. They don't, they don't, they don't do their job. And not saying that I'm doing it either, but I'm just saying, I know I'm doing better than they doing <laughs> because this wasn't taught to me. My authority in God, my authority in Christ. Mm -mm. It wasn't. I'm just keeping it real. Let's read this again. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. We should do what? Set our hearts on the things above. Which is what? Spiritual. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. There we sit also, family. There we sit also with authority and power. As long as you are under him. <sighs> Let me see. Is there a note? Mm -mm, there ain't no note. That's good. Command, family. This is a command. And all you're getting, get an understanding. Because I didn't have one for a long time. I didn't have an understanding of that for a long, 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 long time. All right, let's go. Colossians. Let's read this so I can get y'all up off of here. Okay. Colossians 3 and 1. Look at this. this. Look at this command. Look at that. Ain't that just beautiful? Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at the command, 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 command. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love to see my Bible commanded up. It's just a joy to know like, whoo. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, three and one. Let's read. This is the Amplified. This is my girl. And there is a note for this one. So we're going to read and see what she got to say. Let's read. Look how big this is. Therefore, if. Already standing out. Conjunction. If. Meaning if, it, if you don't do it, the opposite is also true. So let's read it. Therefore, if you have been raised. Because that don't mean you have to be. Because if you're not, this don't apply to you. Let's be clear. If. Okay. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So if you haven't received Christ, then this don't apply to you because it's an if here because you don't have to. It's crystal clear. You got to make sure you read that. If, therefore, if you have been raised. So if you haven't, then you can't do none of this. You ain't going to even have the power, right? Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, what does that mean? To a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead. Okay, keep seeking. That means something that's going to be ongoing. You're going to be doing this continually, right? Keep seeking the things that are above, which are what spiritual family, spiritual things we're seeking. Command is commanded of us where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. My God, my Lord, put on the new self. Let that sink in. Let's read this note right here. Give you a little bit more breakdown. That's why I love study Bibles. Let's read it. Woo! This is so good to me. Set your mind on the things above. What are they talking about? Let's find out. The false teachers were instructing the Colossians to concentrate on temporal observance. In contrast, Paul instructs them to concentrate on the eternal realities of heaven, D, 
didn't I say that? That's where your focus should be 24 seven. Not on the cruises, not on where you're about to vacation, where you gonna spend eternity. That's where you should be focusing all day, every day, making sure your spot is secure, okay? You can plan all these vacations, but you ain't planning where you gonna spend eternity. You ain't even thinking about it. What's wrong with you? Okay, let's keep reading. Let me just start over. I'm sorry. Help me, Lord. That's <sighs> where we get caught up at. The false teachers was instructing the Colossians to concentrate on temporal observances. What's that? Jobs, houses, marriage, careers, all that stuff that's going to pass away. That's what the false teachers will have you focusing on, chasing money. Okay? That's what they're going to have you focusing on. In contrast, okay, the opposite. This is what Paul says you should be focused on. Paul instructs them to concentrate on the eternal realities of heaven. The Greek verb facet emphasizes an ongoing decision. Christians must continually discipline themselves to focus on eternal realities instead of temporal realities on this earth. I said that because I finally get that. I never got that, family. I did, I never got it until 2020, I'm telling you. And when I switched, when my mind shifted from getting not focused on the things of this world and start focusing on where I'm going to spend eternity, everything started to make sense. Then I realized, oh, this is how you focus on seeking God first. Being with him eternally in the next life when I transition from this world, I should be focusing on pleasing him. Everything in this world was made for him and by him, so I should be there to assist and please him. That's that's my job. He made me to please him. Not for me to be here and do what I want to do. No. No. Let's read this again, and then we out of here. We're going to go to the commentary, and I'm going to let you go. I just want this to, I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this is helping somebody because I was 25 years blind. <laughs> okay. Ooh, here we go. Let's read it again. The false teachers was, were instructing the Colossians to concentrate on the temporal observances. In contrast, Paul instructs them to concentrate on the e eternal realities of heaven. The Greek verb facet emphasizes on ongoing decision. You meaning you have to do this on purpose. You have to be intentional. You need to be seeking this thing out. Okay? On purpose. Making a conscious decision. Willing to do. Woo! Willing to do. My Lord. Christians must continually discipline themselves to focus on eternal realities. We should do what? Discipline ourselves to focus on eternal realities instead of temporal realities of this earth. And I'm going to drop the mic right there. Amplified study note. Make it clear. That's what I'm talking about, family. Let's go to the commentary. I'm telling you, once that part, once that clicked in, oh my God, my whole life changed. My whole life changed as I knew it. My whole life changed. My whole life changed. It's so much, um, we ain't even, I haven't even scratched the surface. We, I'm still rubbing it. You understand me? I'm still rubbing the surface. We ain't even scratched the surface on studying and digging deep to the layers and layers and layers of God's word and what he's really saying to us. At least for me. I'm still rubbing the surface, y'all. I'm still like, I'm still rubbing it. I ain't even scratched it yet. Okay? That's just how this is like a whole new world. You know, a whole new world. Okay? The spiritual world, that is. And I want to learn about it. I want to learn about the spiritual world. 
where I'm going to be spending eternity. That's what I study for. I study to learn the spiritual world that God's talking about that I should be focusing on. That's what it's about for me. I want to know about the spiritual world that he said I should be focusing on, period. It's a command. So why am I not learning about that? Why are they not teaching us about that in the church? My Lord, my God. That's why I be so infatuated with spiritual things. Anything dealing with spirits, um, demons, angels, that's spiritual. I want to know about it. I want to know about it because that's what the Lord said. Focus on. Focus on those things. Anyway, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed. I am. All right. Three and one. Where we at? I'm obsessed. Okay. Once my eyes got open, I was like, oh. And I ain't, um. That's why I got thousands of books. Literally, I got so many books. I need to get a whole storage room for all the books that I got. Just trying to study on this stuff. Three and one. <sighs> Here we go. Colossians three and one. And we done, y'all. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Okay? I just love the word. I just, ooh, just me, God, a Bible, and the Holy Spirit. We have a good time. Here we go. Let's read it. It says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. This is a command where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Guess what? Where you also are seated. Then if you see this. That stood out to me because this that's big. The if of this verse does not express any doubt in the mind of the Apostle Paul. It is what has been called the if or the if of argument and may be translated since. Since then you were raised together with Christ. As mentioned in chapter 2, the believer is seen as having died with Christ having been buried with him and having risen with him from among the dead. Listen to this. The, this is so good to me. The spiritual meaning of all this is that we have said goodbye to the former way of life. Let me get you close. Can you read this? I need you to read this. <laughs> okay. Let's read this again. Let me just bring you. Let's start. Let's a little. Let's bring it back. Rewind. Here we go. I need. No. I need y'all to get this. I need you to read this and listen and read it. If you got to pause it. Just let's just let's just read. As mentioned in chapter two, the believer is seen as having died with Christ. That's why you have to be reborn in the new man. Okay, you have to die to self, be reborn. Okay, got it. Having been buried with him and having risen with him from among the dead. Because we were spiritually dead in that old body when we was walking with Satan. That's why you have to be reborn. Get out of that life of walking with Satan. Be renewed and walking with Christ. That's why you have to kill your old man because that's Satan's kid. Your old man is walking with Satan. It's an, it's an imminent with God. It's an enemy of God. That's why you have to be reborn into your new man that is being brought to life in Christ. That's why you can't be in your old man because if you are, you're still walking with Satan family. You're choosing to walk in the darkness. That's why this is so important. You need to understand that that new man is your lifeline. My Lord, my God, let's go. As mentioned in chapter two, the believer is seen as having died with Christ. Woo! Having been buried with him, killing that, killing Satan's kid. No, we don't want to be with you no more. And having risen with him from among the dead. My God, listen, listen. It says spiritually, 
Meaning of all this is that we have said goodbye to the former way of life, which is what? Living with Satan, walking and doing it his way, disobeying God, being in rebellion. We're saying no more. That life is done. We want to live in righteousness, doing things the right way, according to the will of God, right? That's what we want to do. We're saying goodbye to the former way of life, which was living for Satan. That's what we're doing. Then it says, and have an eternal, and then have entered upon a completed new type of life, which is what? In Christ, coming into the light, walking out of the darkness. That is the life of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ, because we have been raised with Christ. We have seek those things which are above. Woo! We are still on earth, but we should be cultivating heavenly ways. That's it. That was the disconnect for me. I'm trying to claim Jesus, but I'm still walking in this world, living for Satan. Deceived. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That's why I told you my eyes had to be opened and my eyes wasn't opened until 2020. Because I didn't have a clue. Nobody taught me this. Nobody sat down and explained this to me. They didn't. We have to say goodbye to the former way of life. Because you're walking with Satan. You're in darkness. You have to kill that body, bury it, get risen with Christ connected to your new life in the light come on whoo that is the life of the risen lord jesus christ yeshua hamashiach okay because we have been raised with christ we're at the right hand of the father in our new bodies put on that new man we should seek those things which are above because where we are in heavenly places. We're no longer in hell, in the darkness, on this earth, seeking those things that are below. Let this sink in. Please, Lord, let them get it. Let them get it, Father. Let them get it. We are still on earth, right? But we are separated. We are set apart. We are holy ones. We are chosen. We are the representatives of Christ, my God. But we should be cultivating heavenly ways, bringing what? The kingdom of heaven to earth. Oh my God, that's our assignment for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You better get this. Hopefully, hopefully, that sunk in somewhere. Hopefully it made sense. Hopefully it connected somewhere. Lord God, just re just reread it. Okay? Ask for understanding and clarity. Go reread it in another translation. Get out another commentary. If you got more than I got like five different commentaries, read it in all of them and get an understanding. In all you're getting, get an understanding because that's one thing I didn't have. And it sucked. We through, y'all. I'm not yelling. I'm just passionate because I just wish somebody would have told me. And we threw. Here we are. Things above. That's what we should seek. Command. Command, family. And we ending right there on that note. Bam. What is this? Let me pull you up because I can't write. This is weak. My lord, these nails, these people jacked me up, y'all. 93. <sighs> okay. Here we done. Here we go. See? Things to seek. Things above. Focusing on your eternal life when you transition here. That's what you should be focusing on. Bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. Period. That's our. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Not stressing out. How are we gonna pay this bill? How many houses? No. Uh. 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 uh, uh. <laughs> that. That's why you stressed out. Cause you focused on the wrong thing. 
That's why you're anxious. That's why you got anxiety. That's why you all jacked up. Because you focused on the wrong thing. You focusing on the things of this world. You supposed to be focusing on the things above. Period. I'm trying to help you. Just, I'm trying to help you. All right, we through. We're done. Week 93. Next week, we're going to be over here. We starting a whole new page. Right? This is where we're going to be at next week, y'all. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Or hopefully you learned something. Seek, ask, and knock. That's the command. Um, that I wanted you to put in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this. If you learned something today, raise your hand. Put your raised hand emoji in the comments saying me. If you learned something today or something was just um, jumped out at you that you didn't know, that you never really tripped off of, put it in the comments. Give me a little bit of feedback. Um, I love to talk to you all in the comments. Okay. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. Again, I apologize for this going up so late. All right. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. Your girl is going through some things. I'll talk to you guys about that later, but just pray for me. All right. Pray for me as I pray for you and I'll see you all next Tuesday. If God spares life, talk to you soon. Bye bye now. <music>